Hey guys, Mr. Champion here, and we're going to start our second installment of the 13 Colonies, the Middle Colonies. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to um, answer the essential question, how were the Middle Colonies formed? Uh, in doing so, you should be able to explain why the colony of New Netherlands became the colony of New York. Second, you should be able to identify how New Jersey separated from New York and describe how Pennsylvania was founded, and then uh, lastly, summarize life in the Middle Colonies. Um, we'll pick up with looking at New Netherland uh, becoming New York. If you remember um, a few lessons back, we talked about New Amsterdam being established um, by the Dutch. Um, one of the difficulties the Dutch faced uh, in establishing a colony was being able to um, get uh, settlers to come. And so what they decided to do is enlist some of their uh, rich Dutch officials, um, which they call patrons, to elicit 50 families um, to move and settle um, New Netherlands and establish farms and other, other industries there. Um, one of the difficulties they faced is that uh, many of the individuals wanted to uh, tr become traders and merchants. Um, they didn't really like the whole idea of farming. Again, it's, it's harsh conditions adapting to the new land, and so it, it created difficulties. Um, but over time, um, they worked out the differences, and, and you see that uh, New Amsterdam or New Netherlands be, was able to thrive and become a flourishing town. You had these urban um, centers starting to form um, near the ports, um, and then you also seen the agriculture um, industry starting to flourish. In 1664, however, the English decided that they would come to uh, New Amsterdam, this now thriving city, um, and state claim. If you remember, um, that John Cabot in his exploration and his um, establishing uh, colonies for the English um, explored this particular area. In addition, um, Plymouth was actually supposed to make its way down to where New Netherlands uh, is loca was located and instead they, they ended up in, in Massachusetts. And so uh, the governor at the time, Peter Stuyvesant, um, after a war with the English uh, was unable to um, um, uphold and, and fortune, unfortunately the English had taken over what is now called New York. Um, under King Charles II, um, he decided that um, he would give to his brother, uh, the Duke of York, this particular area to establish and to uh, bring profit and wealth back to England. New Jersey then separates from New York. Under the Duke of York, um, he decided that he could not govern this, this large colony. And so what he decided to do is to enlist um, some rich uh, uh, merchants in England, uh, which they call proprietary uh, owners, or they would create what we call proprietary colonies. And in essence, he would give them the land. He wouldn't have to watch over govern or uh, provide uh, people to settle this particular area. Um, but he would make a profit um, by basically leasing out or renting this particular area. And this worked over time. Um, however, um, because of, of the uh, difficulties these proprietary landowners um, established, uh, excuse me, were, were unable to establish um, completely the area we know now as New Jersey. And uh, for uh, some time, um, New Jersey. Uh, was just uh, sold off into little bits and pieces so those uh, proprietary owners could, could try and uh, establish New Jersey uh, and make money from it. One of the things we do see though with New, York, New Jersey is that um, it was a fertile land just like New York was um, and you see a large growth of the farming industry uh, or the wheat, wheat industry uh, in this particular area. And so over time, um, basically, New Jersey becomes a part of uh, what we call the royal colony um, under the leadership and the, the art authority of England. And if you remember, um, one of the issues that a lot of the English uh, settlers had with England is that they didn't allow uh, control. They didn't allow representative government. And so you see that take place in New York and New Jersey, that many of the people didn't have representation. Um, and that, again, would lead to turmoil um, within New Jersey and places in New York as well. Third, we want to look at uh, the establishment of Pennsylvania. A gentleman by the name of William Penn um, founded Pennsylvania. Uh, Penn was uh, a rich um, a son of a very wealthy 
businessman in England um, who had ties to the, the king. And uh, because he had ties with the king, uh, the king owed the family money. And so um, William Penn, uh, he became a Quaker uh, in his faith. And he, after his father's death, asked the king, could he um, come over to the New World and establish a colony for um, his, his Quaker um, settlers? And so the king granted the opportunity for uh, William Penn to go over to the New, New World and establish Pennsylvania. Okay? Um, even though he allowed this to happen, the king was definitely against some of the Quaker beliefs. And here are a few of the beliefs of the Quakers. They believed that um, all people were equal in God's sight. And so um, the idea of equality amongst all was very prevalent in the Quaker um, faith and belief. Um, they often spoke out against war and refused to serve in wartime. Um, again, during uh, the 1600s, uh, the England was at war. Again, remember you had the Protestant Reformation. Um, going on, you have um, almost a civil war taking place within England. Uh, uh, the monarchy was threatened, and um, and so you you had this group of Quakers of these Protestant um, believers speaking out against the king and, and not supporting war, and and so that created a problem, and they they suffered persecution for that. They allowed uh, women to preach, which again part of the church, um, whether it be from the the, the uh, Catholic Church down into the Anglican Church, um, this wasn't a, a, a often practice of women preaching. And then lastly, they, again, they refused to bow down to nobles. Um, they were um, committed to God and their belief in God and, and that man wasn't the, the highest authority. And so they refused to bow down um, and, and, and listen to what the king wanted. And so um, Penn, uh, because of his father's wealth, because of the, 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 uh, the king owed his father so much he granted and allowed for Pennsylvania to be established. Now Penn was um, after what he called the holy experiment and the goal basically was to model religious freedom, peace, and Christian living um, for the colonies. Uh, Penn um, often spoke out against those who mistreated uh, Native Americans. In fact Penn, um, even though he had the charter, when he came to the area of Pennsylvania Rather than taking over, as again you remember in Jamestown and other colonies that the English did would do, um, he paid for um, um, the land. He gave the Native Americans um, money for for this this established land, and he also worked alongside them, um, and as they 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 were able to establish their colony. Um, in addition, you had a group of. Uh, Dutch, or basically German-speaking Protestants that would come and settle into this area, again allowing for a diversity uh, within Pennsylvania to start to be established. Um, Penn also had a, a knack for um, urban development or urban planning. And basically, uh, he was able to settle and, and create these ports that um, acted as a way of trade um, to, from Europe to the New World. Um, one particular city you're familiar with, uh, Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love, uh, you'll get to uh, have a chance to see and, and, and explore uh, in an uh, upcoming week um, is established. Um, in addition to that, William Penn also along in, in order to get access to the Atlantic, um, he helped establish or gave individuals rights to go and establish um, what we know as uh, uh, today Delaware. Life in the Middle Colonies. Um, as we spoke earlier, because the Middle Colonies had fertile ground, um, you had a lot of farmers. Um, and because um, it was so plenteous uh, along the Hudson River and the Delaware Rivers, um, the colonies became known as uh, the breadbasket. And so you had this eastern uh, part uh, or the eastern counties that were uh, uh, developed. Um, they grew wheat, barley, rye, uh, and other cash crops. Um, that they would take to the market. The Middle Colonies uh, also exported grain um, and became known, as I said before, the, the breadbasket colonies. One of Penn's probably greatest establishment, and you'll see this uh, um, start to move throughout the other colonies, was he created uh, counties rather than villages or small little centers. 
Um, and again, it allowed for growth, it allowed for uh, expansion, and it allowed for um, various types of trades to now flourish. So you, you have different industries that come into place because you have various groups of people um, coalesce or drawn together in these small uh, areas, um, creating opportunities for other activities. Um, some of the, the types of housing that were formed here, you have, again, because you have various people groups, uh, people coming from all over Europe, the Swedish introduced log cabins. The Dutch used uh, a lot of brickwork, so they established a lot of brick buildings. And again, you'll, you'll get to see a lot of how it's structured as you move throughout Philadelphia um, over the next week. Uh, then Germans uh, developed the wood burning sto stove that would become intricate parts of uh, housing and everyday living. And secondly, uh, we see in the, the back country of Pennsylvania, the, the forest the logging industry became a great um, industry. However, in establishing this kind of back country, um, you see that, and we're going to look into later on, um, the frictions between um, the Native Americans and the, the Indians. Uh, so um, I hope you uh, got a lot from uh, listening to this lecture and the establishment of the Middle Colonies. Remember to complete your summary, which is your essential question, focusing on those four things that um, we said would help you answer that essential question. Thanks. Uh, talk to you later. Bye.